Guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, what I want to do is I want to go over partnerships, give you my take on this, my opinion, and uh, you can take it or leave it and do what you want because a lot of y'all are getting into partnerships right now. We get a lot of questions over this. How do we handle uh, the splits in the money? Who brings the money? How to structure uh, this partnership? Do we go into an entity together or do we do it property by property? I'm going to give you my take on this, the good, the bad, good, the bad, and the ugly because I promise you, you're looking for some bad and ugly if you want to get into some partnerships. So guys, the faster you can start doing deals on your own, the better. But there's limitations to the business and barriers of entry. And I understand just like myself when I got in, I had to use partners because I didn't have the money to do these deals on my own. So I'd bring the deal, someone else would fund the deal, and we split the profits 50-50. Kind of, right? And I'll talk about that here in a second. So let's look at these two individuals. They look super happy or miserable, right? Because they're holding hands, super excited. They're starting the business and they're going to change their life. And uh, guys, let's look at kind of the psychology behind why people do partner, have partnerships. It's because they want to push off some of the work or push off some of the load or push off some of the money to, to do the deal. Someone, if you're in a partnership with someone, it's because you're trying to push off on them, whether you want to believe it or not, right? So this is back in school day, right? When you're little and uh, you're smart when you're little in school to be the kid in the group that doesn't do any of the work but gets the same grade. But as you become an adult and go into the business world where there's real money and real liability on the line, you don't want to put this in the hands of the other person you're working with. Trust me, right? So these two people think it's a great idea to go into a partnership. Now guys, I've made a lot of money working with partners, but I've also had a lot of headache. And here's what I want to address right now real quick for y'all. A lot of people keep asking me what LLC or what type of entity should I go into structure? And I, I want to hold you down right now and stop you in your tracks and say, look, you do not want to go into a partnership as far as a partnership goes tied into a legality issue with uh, an entity, right? And I'm not giving you legal advice on this channel, guys, always, as you know, but you can do these same 50 houses with this exact same partnership, the same two investors, same cash in the deal, same property, same everything, but you do not have to do it and get into an actual partnership where you're in some type of LLC together or other corporate structure, right? Why not just do it one by one by one? Take each property individually and each property is a different property and you can partner on those same properties. You don't have to buy all 50 uh, houses together as one LLC or one entity. And here's why you want to avoid this, guys. Number one, longevity. This is a lifelong business, whether you realize it or not. A lot of y'all just sporadically just jumped in because of emotion. You hopped into this business and you're like, oh, I want to be a real estate investor or a real estate agent. But what you don't realize is most people get, that get into real estate, this is in their blood. This is a lifelong business. And when I talk about longevity, if you get tied up with a lot of properties on 30 year loans or you're starting to do long term transactions, guys, you're going to be tied to this person for a very, very long time. People change over time. People change over time, guys, right? So here's what you got to understand. If y'all know who I am and y'all know kind of the circles that I run in, I know a lot of investors and I have not personally can tell you, I can't personally tell you one partnership that I know that's lasted for over 10 years. Now I'm sure that some of y'all are out there like, hey, hey, me and my partner have been together for 30 years. That's great. You're, you're an anomaly, right? Because almost every partnership I know of explodes at one point. Just like we're seeing massive um, you know, divorce rates. We'll talk about that in a second. This is something that you really need to take in mind before you start buying a bunch of houses and get tied up with these people for a long period of time that you're probably not going to be with them for more than 10 years. In fact, most partnerships implode within a year or two. And that's just something to think about because if you're tying a bunch of houses together, how much headache do you want when you have that business divorce, right? Number two, loss of control. When there's two people in a transaction and you're not the only one making decisions, you're giving up a big amount of control. And if you're the one that's traveling or you're the one that's living distant from the property and you're relying on the other individual to make decisions, what's going to happen if they make the wrong decision and they go pick the wrong color paint, the wrong color carpet, the wrong color this, or they buy something that's more expensive than what you wanted to put in. When you start letting other people into your deals, you're letting other people make decisions and you're losing control. And if you are a control freak, this is going to be a very, very uh, upsetting scenario for you because most of you who get into business as entrepreneurs are control freaks and you're giving up part of your control. So I like to do deals on my own any way I can uh, to avoid a partnership. But if you have to guys, just think about that and think about the partner that you're going in into doing these deals with. Is this somebody that's going to cause you a massive headache? Because a lot of times you get excited, you have a house under contract, you're like, I just got to get this deal going. So you're not thinking of what's going to happen over the coming months or years because you're just trying to get that deal going but you're tying yourself into a situation you're giving up control. Think about that. Workload. Now, when it comes to your workload, um, 
it is impossible for people to do 50-50, right? There's no way to track what that other person's doing. You're not there sitting in their house while they're at their computer. They're not there while you're, while you're at the property. There's zero chance that y'all are gonna do the exact same workload. Someone will always do more than the other, and because of that, someone's always gonna feel slighted and feel like the other one's taking advantage of them, and then there's always gonna become, or there's always gonna be tension, right? Those of you who know what I'm talking about are nodding their head right now. You cannot see what the other person's doing, and they may actually be, be doing more than you, but you feel like they're doing less, and either way, whether it's the case or not, you're still gonna have tension, and there's still gonna ba basically be a blowout in a very short time period, right? So when people feel like one's doing more than the other, it causes a massive headache in the partnership, and that's why most of them end. Okay, hope you get that. Number four, liability. When you're in a partnership, and you own a property with someone, and you give them uh, freedom to go make decisions, you're giving up control, going back to the, the other point, what happens if you're traveling or you're not paying close attention and you're just the money partner, right? You're trusting uh, this other investor to handle the job uh, correctly and properly, right? And what happens if they go do things that they're not supposed to do? Do repairs without pulling permits or they're um, you know, not following any of the legality issues that they should. There's many things that can happen, guys, when it comes to liability. What happens if you're just trusting them to uh, go, go do the uh, plumbing right and they hired someone who did it incorrectly and the house floods? What do you think is gonna happen? You're 50-50 owner of the property, you could get sued as well, and you're gonna be liable for all that, right? And, and I told a story one time about a house that we had that we bought and we fixed up, had everything permitted, everything green tagged, everything licensed, did it 100% on the up and up, but uh, these inspectors missed the spliced wire in the attic and the, and the individual living there had overwhelmed the house with plugging too many things in, leaving too many things on, and the house burned down, right? What would happen if your partner was in control of that he didn't green tag everything, didn't pull, um, you know, permits, didn't do it right, and that house burned down and that person in the house uh, was trapped in the house. Think about the nightmare that you would be in. So you're giving up control, and not only are you giving up control, guys, you have massive amounts of liability. Just think about that. Slow to fix problems. Real estate is not a very liquid business. It is a long uh, term business and guys it can be a massive headache if you get tied up in these properties they're not quick to fix right so you're gonna once the problems do arise it's not like oh man okay let's just end this tomorrow right it's gonna be a big headache and that is why because of slow to fix problems I advise you to do it this way instead of this way because at least if you're buying one property one property one property one property one property and partnering on individual properties you just can get out of them one by one, but you're not gonna do 50 all at once. So if a problem arises, you're not gonna have, be tied to all these other properties with them, right? Because if you're flipping houses, you're getting in and out of them, right? But if you had bought multiple houses or you're in a ton of houses and you're tied up into an LLC, that problem's not gone until that one house sells. It's not gone until all the houses that y'all had until you can shut it down and then there's gonna be, and if you have a lot of houses, guys, you're gonna definitely end up in some type of mediation. You're gonna have attorneys involved and it's gonna just be a nightmare. It's gonna drain on your energy, drain on your emotions, and it's gonna drain on your bank account. That's for sure. Guys, because last one, when you realize you're gonna tie into a business entity together, you are 50-50 owners of that company together and you're buying a bunch of houses, this is just like a marriage, right? You're tied together emotionally, physically, spiritually, Financially, anything and everything, you're going to be tied together just um, almost the exact same way as if you're married. And I promise you, a business divorce is in your near future if you're looking at statistics, guys. So the best way to handle this is work with lots of partners, right? Instead of having one partner to do 50 houses, have multiple partners. Try different partners out. See which ones are good. See which ones you can trust. See which ones are not going to mess with you. Um, see which ones because you don't want to go into an entity and go buy 15 houses real quick before you know that you don't like this person and get caught up into a long, slow problem that's not easily able to be fixed, especially when you find out they're breaking a lot of things, uh, a lot of rules when it comes to li liability issues that you're now on the hook for, right? So I hope that makes sense. The last thing, guys, I want to point out just one more thing here that's very important that's cost me a ton of money over the years is when I started, I was bringing the deal to the table and was doing all the work, and I had a financing partner bring all the money to the table because I didn't have the money to get into hard money loan and I hadn't raised private money yet, and the money that I could raise, I had to give equity away through 50% equity deals, right? And so what happened was I let them control all the money. So every receipt, every dollar that went back into the account, every number that was tracked, they were controlling it. And when you give control to the money, the person that's in control of the money always wins if there's, a, if there's an error, if something's getting double counted. So what happened was, I wasn't tracking the numbers, I, I just trust these individuals, and I did, I trusted them, and I still think they're okay people, but 
people, whether they're shady or scumbags or criminals, or they're just incompetent, can mess up on the numbers. And when you start doing a lot of deals at once, guys, that happens very, very easily. And what happened was they started double counting numbers and, and, and adding numbers from certain properties and one property to this property. And there's all sorts of just miscalculations and, and uh, clerical errors. And what happened was I lost thousands and thousands of dollars because I wasn't on top of my game. I wasn't paying attention. I just thought they had it under control and I was paying double. So for example, let's say you had 20,000 actual repairs and you're the one where the money's coming back into your account. If you're the only one that owns the property, whether or not you're wrong on your calculations, it is net net the same to you no matter what, if that makes sense. So even if you're off on your numbers, the same exact dollar amount you have comes into your account as if you would have been off on your numbers or right on your numbers. I hope I, hope I made that clear a little bit. Now, if you have a partner in control of the numbers and you actually spent $20,000 in repairs, but they double counted things and they miscalculated and they put up a number that says 23,000, when you go to sell the house, that profit that could have been say 20,000 is now gonna reflect 17,000. So when the split happens, you're gonna get 50% less of the clerical error. Does that make sense guys? So if you're not the one controlling the numbers, you're always the one at risk. So if you are gonna do partnerships, be the one in control of the money, be the one in control of the receipts, or you need to have a shared account where every single receipt goes in and you say, if this receipt is not in here and you cannot prove that you spent this money, I'm not taking your word for it. It does not get paid out. It never ha basically existed. So the person in control of the money has a lot more um, responsibility. So I hope that makes sense, guys. Don't get tied up into an entity. Just do a property by property basis because you have a quicker exit, less headaches, and you're not going to be tied to these people for a very long time. And you're not going to have to get involved with attorneys and all the headaches that we normally see people that get in, into partnerships, guys. I hope you like today's video. Be safe. Bet these partners very closely, guys. Just because they seem like a nice person because you met them at an REI club does not mean they're a nice person and does not mean they have your best interest in heart. There's a lot of money at stake in this business and there's a lot of greed involved and there's a lot of... Uh, unfortunate things that can happen. I just want y'all to be safe out there, guys. I hope you liked today's video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'll see you on the next one. Have a good day.